You know how everyone is talking about AI these days, but you just can't figure out how to get it to do anything that's actually useful. I mean, there's only so many dad jokes and funny poems you need to generate before the novelty starts to wear off. So how do you get AI tools like Bing Chat to do things like take administrative tasks off your plate, help you with work and help you do better in school. In this video, I'm sharing 15 amazing and useful Bing AI prompts that you can use to get Bing AI to help you do things better and faster than before. Prompt number one allows you to use Bing to summarize text. Now the prompt that you would use would be this. So summarize this text in three paragraphs, bullet points, simple language, or explain it like I'm five. The nice thing about Bing in comparison to ChatGPT is that it's connected to the internet. So if I want to, I can simply paste in a link where there's say an article or a blog post that I want summarized and ask it to summarize that without me having to copy the entire text and paste it in there. So for example, let's paste in this link and then ask Bing to summarize the top five books on this list. So it tells me the top five books on this list are The Courage to be Disliked, The Elder of Ego Effect, Brave New World, Inferior, and Never Split the Difference. And it gives me a short description of what each of those books are. So that's really useful. You can also use the Edge browser application thing. Here, open that up and then open whatever web page you want to summarize ask it to say, summarize this blog post. And it's going to go and generate here. Here's a summary of this blog post. It's about how to become a millionaire and making small savings decisions that add up to big amounts over time. So it's gone and done that for me. Um, I did find this a little bit finicky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I imagine this will get better over time. Prompt number two is to fix spelling and grammar. So here's the prompt that you would use. So paste in your text and then edit this text for proper spelling and grammar. Really simple really straightforward and easy. All right, so for example, edit this text for proper spelling and grammar, here's the text. So here's the edited text and it has made some edits and changes. Instead, if I wanted to take that a step further and get it to tell me what changes it made, I could alter my prompt to be this instead. So edit this text for proper spelling and grammar, rewrite the text with the changes and give me a list of the changes you made. Here's the text and then I pasted it in. So it's gonna give me the output and then it's going to explain to me what changes it made so I can go and look at that and decide whether I like what it changed or not. I find this is more useful than just getting it to rewrite with the changes because then I can at least have an input into the process and edit it the way I want to edit it. Prompt number three is to create images. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. Bing can either directly create the images for you. It uses a version of Dolly to do that, or you can prompt it to output a prompt for mid journey. And then you can plug that into mid journey and get mid journey to do it for you. You're going to get different results because they're different models, but they both can be very useful. So if you want to prompt Bing to create its own images, here's what you would do. So your prompt would be create an image of, and then enter in your description of the image you want. You want to include things like subject style, lighting, aspect ratio, etc. And the more specific you can be, the closer you're going to get to whatever you have envisioned in your head. So for example, create an image of a cute Pomeranian dog eating ice cream at a cafe in Paris, photorealistic style, street photography, morning light side view with aspect ratio 916. And this is what it comes up with. So it's pretty cute. It's not quite photorealistic. It's a bit cartoony. So instead of this, maybe I want it to generate a mid journey prompt and then I'll plug that into mid journey to see what I get. I would say, look up how to create good mid journey prompts, then use what you learned to create a prompt for an image of, and then I pasted in my description of the Pomeranian at the cafe. So the reason we want to tell Bing to look up how to create mid journey prompts before we actually give it the instructions is that because it's connected to the internet, it can go and learn essentially what goes into crafting a good prompt from the internet and then use that to generate a better prompt than it would if you just told it straight out to generate a mid journey prompt. The connection to the internet is Bing's biggest strength. So we want to use that as much as possible because we're going to get better results when we do that. Okay. So Bing tells me a little bit about what it learned, where it learned that from, it provides the reference links, and then it gives me the image prompt, which I can plug into mid journey and see what I get. So let's do that right now and I'll come back and show you what we got for that image. Okay, so this is what Mid Journey spit out. And I will notice that right away, it is more what I asked for. It is a photorealistic style. And that to me, that looks a lot closer to what I wanted, what I was envisioning. And then I got through the Dolly version that Bing did directly. The only thing that it did do wrong is I noticed that it didn't properly prompt for the 916 aspect ratio. So it didn't quite learn that properly because just saying in the prompt, this image has an aspect ratio of 916, 
doesn't actually get Midjourney to output an image that isn't square. But other than that, the image is a lot better and I could use what I know to help tweak that and get exactly what I want. Prompt number four is for idea generation. Now this can be used for a lot of different things such as for YouTube videos, articles, outlines, blog posts, essays, papers, you name it, you can use Bing to help you generate ideas for basically any kind of content you might want to create. So the prompt you would use for this is as follows. So I'm writing a blog article or paper on topic. Give me a number of creative title ideas in the style of X. So for example, I want to come up with a title for a video about 15 useful ways to use Bing chat for work. Give me 10 viral title ideas in the style of Mr. Beast. Okay, so this is what Bing spits out. So here are some possible titles for your video and it lists out 10 different ones. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at these and then pick one I like. So if I wanna take that a step further, so now I have a title, I wanna know what thumbnail I should make to go with that. So I'm gonna go with title idea number two and based off of that title, describe five concepts for different thumbnails that could go with that video. I want them to be eye-catching and get the most clicks include no more than four words in your thumbnail. So I've added a little bit of extra here because I know what goes into a good thumbnail. So I wanna give it a bit of extra specific direction. So it comes up with something that I'm gonna find useful. Okay, so now Bing is generating possible thumbnail ideas. So a picture of you holding a stack of cash with the words Bing chat equals dollars. A picture of you smiling and pointing at a laptop screen with Bing chat logo with the words how I got promoted. Okay, so it's gonna give me some more ideas and then I can pick one of those. Prompt number five is to write a school essay. So again, as I've said before, the more specific you can be in your instructions, the better the quality of writing is going to come out of Bing. So this is the prompt you might use. So write a length of essay, paper, or article on the topic of your topic for a specific level or audience. Make sure you cover main points A, B, and C. So for example, write a five paragraph essay on the theme of family and relationships in the Hunger Games for a university level English course. Make sure to cover Katniss's relationships with Prim, Rue, and Peeta and include examples in your writing. Okay, so Bing is gonna start writing this essay and let's see, okay, throughout her throughout the novel, Katniss's relationships with her sister Prim, her ally Rue, and her fellow tree Peeta reveal how she values loyalty, compassion, and sacrifice in the face of adversity. So it's kind of walking me through, okay, in the first paragraph, I'm gonna talk about this and then it writes it. And then the second paragraph, I'm gonna talk about this and it writes it. So this is kind of a weird way it's presenting it, but you can obviously cut out the bits that you don't need and use that as a starting point. So this is obviously not gonna be a super long essay and I might want it to break things down and expand on different things. So say in the per first paragraph where it's talking about Katniss's relationship with her sister, I might want it to expand that into multiple paragraphs. So I can take things a step further and tell it to do that until I've created the kind of essay that I want. Remember a back and forth with the AI is going to bring you better results than just prompting it one time and then taking what it gives you. Prompt number six is to come up with product or business ideas for a specific niche. Bing is really useful if you're an entrepreneur, if you're trying to start a business, and you can use it for so many different things. So the prompt, if you're trying to come up with a product idea or a business idea in general is this. So I wanna create a business in niche. Generate a list of product and business ideas around this topic, and then add on any specifications that you might have. So for example, I wanna create a business around gardening, generate a list of product and business ideas around this topic. I want to be able to run this business online from home. I have no coding experience and I have $2,000 to start. All right, so it's spitting out some product and business ideas around gardening that I can start online from home with no coding experience and $2,000. So create and sell custom landscape designs, create them in SketchUp or Canva, which works for me because I can do that from home and it's not expensive. Residential garden maintenance. Okay, this is something that's gonna require me to go out and do, I guess, technically I could hire somebody to do the actual work for me and I run it from home. Um, gardening social media expert or gardening subscription box. So it's giving me some ideas to start with and if I want more ideas than that, I can just get it to continue. Give me five or 10 more ideas until I find something that I actually like. Prompt number seven is to improve your writing. Not only can Bing help you correct your spelling, your sentence structure and your grammar, it can also make you a better writer. So a prompt you can use for this. You are a literary editor or an editor at the New York Times. Critique my writing and give me feedback on how I can improve it and achieve the desired outcome. So for example, you are a creative writing professor at Oxford. Critique my writing and give feedback on how I can improve it to make it more persuasive 
and original. All right, so let's see what kind of feedback it's giving me here. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but it's gonna give me some ways that I can improve this essay and get better grades on my work if I'm doing this for school. So this is really, really useful and it can actually help you become a better writer overall. Prompt number eight is for writing emails or replying to work messages in something like Slack. So the prompt you would use, write a reply to this email or a message. I want to tell them and then insert the general vibe of the message you want to give. So for example, write a reply to this email from my colleague. I want to tell them I'm available to meet with a client on Monday or Tuesday afternoon to discuss the budget. My schedule is free from one to 3 PM. And here's the message. Okay, so here's a possible reply to your colleague's email. Hi, colleague name, that's great news. I'm glad Steve from Google's interested in our product. I'm available to meet, blah, blah, blah. And it lays out my calendar and this is useful. I can have this email up and sent and ready to go with a matter of seconds instead of me trying to figure out what to say, how to say it, and yeah. As an introvert, this is the kind of stuff that I hate doing at work. So having Bing help me out and do that in a matter of seconds is really, really useful. Prompt number nine is to write a cover letter or resume. Now applying for jobs always sucks. Nobody likes this. And now Bing can help you make this a lot easier and a lot faster. So the prompt, I am a insert your job title with experience in list some of your relevant job experience, applying for job position at the company you're applying for. Write me a cover letter highlighting my strengths of, and then list some of the strengths you want highlighted. So an example of this, I am a concept artist with experience in movies and TV projects, and I am applying for a concept art position at a gaming studio called Epic Games. Write me a cover letter highlighting my ability to work in both 2D and 3D aspects of game design. So just a couple of caveats is you're gonna have to double check for anything made up because Bing doesn't actually know what you have experience with. It's probably going to put in some things like programs you have experience with that you don't or job experience that you don't actually have. You need to make sure you fix those things because obviously lying on your resume or cover letter is not a good look. But it does generate something that is a very good start. It just takes some minor tweaking and editing to get it up to par and get it ready for submission. And the more specific you can be in the prompt by telling it what experience you have, the easier that's gonna be because then it can draw from that and fill in your resume with the information you've provided. Prompt number 10 will help you cure writer's block. So if you've ever had that situation where you need to write something for work, for school, or for yourself, but you just don't know what to write next, Bing can help. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. First, if you're having trouble coming up with the ideas that you should cover in an article or a blog post or something like that, then you would use this prompt. So I am writing a blog essay or article on your topic. Can you write me an outline with what important points I should cover? Prompt number two, maybe you've already started writing and you just don't know what comes next in the next sentence or paragraph or what have you. So in that case, here's a prompt you could use. So insert the text that you are currently working on, then continue writing the next paragraph matching my style and voice. So for example, continue writing the next paragraph of this article matching my style and voice. Here's my writing and I paste it in and it's going to spit out something that will do its best to match the writing style that I have used in the paragraph I provided it. Prompt number 11 will explain complex concepts or topics to you. This is really useful if you're trying to learn anything new, anything that's really complicated. So the prompt you can use, explain this complex topic to me. Use simple language or explain like I'm a fifth grader. I use this prompt all the time when there is a concept, say in finance or law that I don't really understand and I wanna get a good base knowledge of what the heck I'm looking at. I use this all the time because it's like having your own personal teacher there to explain things for you. It never gets bored, never gets tired. For example, can you explain what monetizing the debt means? Explain it to me like I'm a fifth grader. So it's gonna give me a basic explanation of the term. This is a complex topic that honestly, a lot of people cannot grasp. So if you can get Bing to explain it to you as if you're a kid, if you're a fifth grader or you're five, this is a really, really useful tool for learning just about anything. Prompt number 12 will turn Bing into your own personal tutor. You can use it to test yourself with questions in say your homework. So let's look at a couple different ways to use this. So prompt number one, 
test me. So I'm studying for my grade 11 biology exam. I want to test my knowledge about genetics and Mendel's laws. I want you to ask me a question which I will attempt to answer. Then you tell me whether I got it right and give me a hint if I got it wrong. So, okay, it's going to give me a question. So what is the name of the process by which gametes are produced in sexually reproducing organisms? I'm a little rusty on my high school biology, so I want to say it's meiosis. Surprisingly, I got that right. Um, so it's going to tell me, yes, meiosis is the process by which gametes are produced, blah, blah, blah. It's going to explain a little bit more about that term. And then it's going to ask me, do you want another question? Yes. So it's going to generate me another question and I can test my knowledge on that. I'm pretty sure the answer to this one is Punnett square. Let's just say something that's wrong. So dot plot. I asked it to give me a hint if I was wrong. So that's incorrect. The, oh. It's not perfect. It tells me what the answer is. So this might require a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of being more specific in how it answers to get the kind of questions you want. So, okay, that part of the experiment did not work, but I can still use it as a means to quiz myself on the topics that I need to learn. Prompt number 13 is to research and collect data and analyze it. So this can be really useful for work, for school, whatever you're doing. If you need to spend time researching and finding information on the internet, Bing can help you collect that information that's relevant to your question or topic, gather it for you, and even write an analysis on the connections between those things. So some examples of some prompts you could use to do this. So prompt number one, research this topic, then create a chart of X with columns for A, B, C, and D. Then you can take that a step further and the prompt number two that would come after that could be write a report analyzing what you found. So let's go through an example. I'm a new YouTuber and I want to buy a new camera to film videos with. Research the best cameras for YouTubers under $1,000, then create a chart with the top five options with columns for camera name, maker, price, lens type, and rating. Then write me a short explanation on which camera I should choose based on your findings. So it's going to go and search best cameras for YouTubers under $1,000 and then generate me a chart. So it is generating a chart with the columns that I specified. So camera name, maker, price, lens type, and the rating. Following the chart, it's giving the analysis and telling me that the best camera depends on my preferences and needs. But if I want a compact, easy to use camera, the Sony ZV-1 is a good choice. And then it goes on to explain why that is the case, why it thinks I should pick that one over the others. Gathering data from the internet is really where an AI like Bing shines because this kind of thing can take you hours of searching and finding what's out there. And Bing can literally do this in an instant, gather that for you and put it here. Obviously you have to double check its sources, double check that these things are right, that the pricing is right, that the names and the uses and the features are all right. It's gonna take a little bit of double checking because again, all these AI tools lie often and they lie well, but it's going to save you so much time in the long run. Prompt number 14 is to make connections between disparate ideas. Bing is not only really good at searching the internet, collecting the information you want and presenting that in a chart, but it can also do a really good job of connecting different ideas that on first glance don't necessarily look like they have any connections. It's really good at doing this kind of analytical work. So a useful prompt structure to do this. So research idea or topic one and idea topic number two. What are some shared ideas between these two things? Write a report explaining the major connections between these two ideas. So just to illustrate this point, an example, research the book Atlas Shrugged and the game God of War. What are some shared ideas between these two pieces of media? Write a report explaining the major connections between them. Now, I don't really know what there is in common between this video game and this novel, but we'll see what Bing comes up with and see if it's plausible. So it's giving a brief summary of the novel and what the game is about. And then some shared ideas between these two pieces are the conflict between individualism and collectivism. So both Atlas Shroud and God of War explore the theme of how individuals struggle against oppressive societies that try to control their lives and values. And then it gives examples between each one. The second example, the role of reason and emotion. They both emphasize the importance of reason as a guide for human action and morality and the quest for identity and purpose. And having read this book and played this game, like, yeah, that makes sense to me. I could see how those could both, all of those points could be argued as connections between them. So this is really interesting because if I wanted to write an essay on the connection between these two things, it would probably take me a while to think up a few things. It's a lot of text to go through. It's a lot of ideas to process and figure out how they relate, but Bing can do this in seconds, which is really incredible, really impressive. Prompt number 15 is to code an app or find errors in the code that you've already written. So I will preface this with the disclaimer that I am not a coder. I 
know a little bit of HTML and CSS that I can, you know, put in here and there on my website. But apart from that, I am not an expert on this. I can still think of a couple different ways that I could use this to be useful to me. So the prompts for this are going to vary depending on what you want it to do. But for example, what you would include in your prompt is first, you want to describe exactly what you want it to do to the best of your abilities, specify what kind of code you want it to use, or if you don't know, give it your idea and then ask it what kind of code you should use. It can connect to the internet and find that answer for you and give you a recommendation. Also, if you're like me and you don't know what you're supposed to do with that code, like where it goes to actually make it work, then again, you can ask Bing what to do with it and it can give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to use it, how to set it up and get it working. So for example, I have my website running on Kajabi and I want to create a gradient highlight effect to go over my text. So I don't want it to just be like a regular yellow highlight. I want it to be a gradient highlight from teal to purple to pink. And I want to have that cover half of my text. So here's the prompt I put into Bing to get it to generate me some code and we'll see if it actually works. So I'm going to grab that code and put it into my Kajabi landing page and see if it actually does what I ask it to. So then I took the custom code, pasted it into the custom code section for my landing page, saved, and then now my H1 headings have this gradient highlight effect. I have found with getting Bing to do any coding, it is gonna take a bit of back and forth and problem solving, going back and forth and figuring out where this stuff can go. But overall, this is something that if I knew nothing about code and I know very little, I could have done this. I could have made this work from nothing. And that is a huge step forward for a lot of people. Keeping these tips in mind when you're using Bing to do just about anything is going to help you get better results than the vast majority of your peers. But if you want to take things a step further and have a list of useful prompts ready to go whenever you're using Bing, then I put together this convenient little AI prompts cheat sheet, which you can download and have available ready to go whenever you're using Bing to do anything. It's full of a bunch of exact prompts and examples to help you figure out how to use this tool. And again, you can grab that for free at the link in the description below. So that was 15 genius level Bing AI prompts you can use that are actually useful in your work and daily life. I hope you found something in there that was useful, but if you're interested in learning more about Bing, then check out this video next, which is all about unlocking the secrets of Bing to become a pro user. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.